Americans onto this information so they can get involved as well. Yeah, we're asking everybody to send the AE911truth.org link to every architect and engineer they can find throughout the country. We've got to wake them up. AE911truth.org. You can go to the store and purchase the new DVD. As Jason mentioned, it has the abridged version of our two-hour talk, uh, and it's abridged to 10 minutes, and it, which includes just Building 7, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. So choose the amount of time that you or your friends have and show them that particular uh, DVD. It's uh, really quite a great way to... Uh, to, to, to be flexible with, with how much time somebody might have. Exactly, and you know what I like about this is you can get the DVD and then maybe convert it to another file, play it on your iPhone. The 10-minute version is just perfect. I mean, I often carry around Building 7 coming down on my phone so that I can at least explain to somebody why I'm wearing an Investigate 9-11 t-shirt or a 9-11 was a lie, DefendFreedomInfoWars.com. A uh, little armband here, but I always want to give them something right off the bat that they're going to be like, oh, well, look at that. You know, and Building 7 was really, in my last film, Fabled Enemies, the only building that I really showed. And I didn't even have to allude to controlled demolition just by showing the videos and uh, playing Barry Jen Jennings' witness account along with news reports of him and Michael Hess. The evidence speaks for itself. Explosives were going off in Building 7, and it was brought down later in a controlled demolition. The evidence is undeniable. Yeah, it's pretty clear. And it's just so incredible to see the, architect, the look on the architect's face, who have never seen Building 7 come down, because we've never seen it on the mainstream media, with extremely rare exceptions. Uh, they watch that thing come down. It's 47 stories. This is the third worst structural failure in modern history. And most all architects know nothing about it. Structural engineers as well. Nothing. And there it is, coming down in six and a half seconds, at freefall acceleration, admitted by NIST under pressure from those of us at Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth who, who forced them into the corner to admit that this indeed was freefall acceleration. And, uh, and yet they don't in, admit or acknowledge the implications of that, meaning if this building is converting all of its gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy, at free fall speed, it can't do any other work. It can't crush 40,000 tons of structural steel on the way down to the ground, you know, in six and a half seconds. It doesn't work. The physics are not there. People understand this intuitively, and then they sign our petition calling for a new investigation. Well, that is excellent news that you're waking up so many people within the field. But you're, you're so correct. I mean... It would take somebody who just is completely out of their mind or just out of touch with reality to look at that building falling and not understand that there is something going on there other than damage and fire. Even buildings that were right up against the World Trade Center. I mean, look at Building 6. It's literally scooped out from the rooftops into the basement, but that structure didn't fall into itself. Not only that, but Building 7 falls into itself, and it doesn't damage the surrounding buildings at all, Richard. It's beautiful. The, the sides of the building are brought inward in a classic controlled demolition where the interior columns are taken out first to avoid damage to adjacent buildings. And then because of that, the penthouse drops uh, just a second before uh, the rest of the building, and there's a classic kink at the top of the building, uh, all hallmarks of controlled demolition. And none of them, of course, hallmarks of uh, destruction by fire, which is the uh, official uh, r r rationalization for the d d demise of, of this building. Mm -hmm. There were about 10, 10 fires in this building, and the worst fires we have evidence of, photographic or video, are actually fairly small. And there's a lot of smoke uh, on the south side, uh, but there's, there's no flames uh, that are visible. And, and yet we're told that what happens is we have thermal expansion, this roaring fire on the 12th floor, uh, which, by the photographic and video evidence, is gone out. There's no roaring fire the last hour and a half of the building. Nevertheless, they say there is, and they, it, it's supposed to have in, it thermally expanded these long span beams uh, and knocked the girder off of its seat, causing successive floor failures of nine floors, leaving column 79 unbuckled. For that length. And so the yeah, whole it thing sounds like fairy tales down. and unicorns to me, Richard. We're going to come back on the other side. I want to talk about a gentleman named Shyam S. Sunder. 
It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmes, PrisonPlan.tv, InfoWars.com. Streaming live at GCNLive.com as well as PrisonPlanet.tv. This is the Info Warrior. We're joined by Richard Gage. And now I want to talk about a person who really was the front man for this NIST investigation and the spokesperson for debunking all the theories before they even had the official report, S. Shyam Sunder. Now, in the initial Popular Mechanics article, before they even put out the book, they quoted Chayam Sunder as saying that uh, at the bottom quarter of the building, 25% was scooped out, uh, kind of like uh, you know the building had literally been scooped out of the bottom, and that's why this thing fell, because of structural damage. Now, it turns out, when they put out the official report, they had to admit that the evidence showed that it wasn't scooped out, and there was no substantial damage to the back of the building. Yeah, uh, that is true, and also they acknowledged uh, in the final report that diesel fuel uh, was not a contributing factor. There were generators in the building, and and uh, earlier reports uh, uh, blamed you know these two factors, and and they're not factors at all, really. Uh, the, the the damage uh, by some of the columns that uh, flew all the way from the twin towers somehow 350 feet uh, and 600 feet even from the Twin Towers. Some of these uh, beam, these columns and beams hit the Building 7 and presumably started the fires there. Uh, but they now acknowledge, uh, well, really, these are normal office fires which caused the acceleration of this building at free fall, at, uh, which would require... 400 structural steel connections failing per second. Uh, Shyam Sunder documents uh, how this building fell due to fire in his computer animation, which bears no resemblance to the collapse of the building as seen on the videos. The computer animation even crimps at the top, bulges at the bottom, and in, has major warpage and indentation in the uh, perimeter steel structural frame, which is a moment-resisting frame, a very strong frame. So the computer modeling actually correctly models uh, incredible warping, as we would expect, but that's not what we see in the videos. There's, it's a straight-down symmetrical uh, collapse, um, uniform acceleration. It's, um, it's very, it, it, in fact, their computer modeling disproves the fire theory as, in, as anything could. Yeah, and then not, not only that, but uh, uh, someone who contacted InfoWars last summer, I remember because I talked to him on the phone, we gave him a press pass, he got into the initial... Uh, uh, it was the press conference right after they had released it. They literally shut off the lights on him when he was asking questions uh, because he was asking tough ones. He said, well, how did you uh, come to this uh, conclusion using computer-generated models? What's the information and the program you use to get to that? Oh, we don't know. You know, they, they don't actually cite any scientific evidence, any mathematical problems, any kind of program that actually does this. It looks like they just built a model and animated it to fall in the fashion they wanted it to. Yes, they, well, they tried, but they couldn't even do that. <laughs> and yes, they won't even give us. We we have a FOIA request in for the uh, for, for the um, for the modeling uh, data so that we can run the program ourselves and check it. No, this is the most secretive, uh, you know, investigation. It's supposed to be a public investigation done with public money. It's supposed to be open. And the same with the Twin Towers modeling. It's it's ludicrous. They try to show us that this 15-story section above the jet plane impacts in the case of the North Tower, drove this building down due to its incredible weight at almost free fall speed. It turns out to be two-thirds of free fall acceleration, a smooth, continuously accelerating down through the strongest and, and, and coldest part of the building. In other words, not on fire down below jet plane impacts. And, and yet it's accelerating down through 80,000 tons of structural steel designed to resist that load. But the ludicrous thing is, is, is that this 15-story section isn't even there after four seconds. It's destroyed itself, reducing its volume in half in just two seconds, according as seen in all the videos. And then in four seconds, it's completely gone. What's happening after that? The building is tearing itself apart at almost free fall speed, hurling a 20-ton perimeter wall units 600 feet at 50 to 70 miles per hour. The ends of these beams, many of them dripping with molten metal, as seen by the first responders. 
Absolutely, and literally the concrete is peeling off.